Hello, my name is Craig J. Davis and welcome to my channel. The first Friday for sermon. Now, I don't usually do sermons on a Friday or any other day. I usually do sermons on Sundays because tradi traditionally in the Christian faith, that is when sermons take place. But today is a good Friday. So today I am I'm making an, an exception. Before I continue, of course, I still have this painting that I did about 10 years ago. As you can see, it's a toddler. Um, it, it looks like a little girl, but it is a toddler sleeping. Uh, look how peaceful she looks. I'm still wanting to, to sell this painting, but the, pr the price has gone up again. Yes, I have increased the price because I am desperate for your finances. And <laughs> the price I am selling this is now £6,287.46. That is six that is six thousand two hundred and forty eight pounds and fifty six pence. If you're interested in purchasing this painting for six thousand four hundred and eighty seven pounds and eighty seven pence, then please don't hesitate to contact me by leaving your comments in the comment section below. Thank you. So. Here is the painting. Right, carrying on with the sermon. What is Good Friday? Well, a Good Friday is where Christians celebrate the crucifixion of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ. Now, to celebrate, um, to celebrate someone who was going through the agonizing death of crucifixion where a person is a, where a person is either tied with a rope by the wrists to a cross or is nailed to a cross for for a group of people called christians to celebrate this thing may be bizarre to the heathen world because why on earth would anyone with an ounce of decency want to worship and celebrate a man being crucified to a, cro to a cross? Well, yes, it is a symbol of, of, of death, but it is also a symbol of life because Jesus Christ went to the cross to be the to be the ultimate human sacrifice to die on the cross for our sins and to prevent our souls from going to hell and he also it it he also it it defeated satan's power when he went to the cross if you can Please turn with me if you have your Bibles uh, with you. And I, in public, I always read from the New International Version because, as I say in every ser sermon, not everyone today understands um, 16th century English. Okay, so if you turn with me to this to this scripture. And I think, right, from what I'm about to read, I think it's the longest scripture that I've, I have ever read so, so far. It's in John. Shut up! The nuisance. Right. John chapter... N N Magpies. Uh, noisy things, aren't they? They are, they are 
Oh, for some sudden seagulls! Okay, John chapter 19, from verse 12 to verse 30. So that is John chapter 19, from verse 12 to verse 30. I will go through this as quick as I can because it's quite a long scripture. From then on, Pont from then on, Pontius Pilate sought to release him. That's Jesus Christ, right? But the Jews cried out, "If you release this man, you are not Caesar's friend." Everyone who makes <laughs> everyone who makes himself a king opposes Caesar. So when Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judgment seat at the place called the Stone Paver in Ara in Aramaic, that is Gabbatha. Now it now it was the day of preparation of the Passover. It was about the sixth hour. He said to the Jews, Behold your king. But they cried out, Away with him! Away with him! Crucify him! Pilate said to them, What? Seriously? Shall I crucify your king? The chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. So he delivered him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and he went out bearing his own cross to the place called the place of a skull, which in Arabic is called Golgotha. There they crucified him. And with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus between them. Pilate also wrote in inscription and put it on the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this inscription. For the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city. And it was written in Aramaic, in Latin, and in Greek. So the chief priests of the Jews said to Pilate, Do not write the king of the Jews, but rather, This, this man said, I am the king of the Jews. Pilate answered, Look, what I have written, I have written. In other words, I have decided what I've what I've put in writing on on his cross. So shut up. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they took his garments and divided them into four parts. One part for each soldier, also his tunic. But the tunic was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. So they said to one another, Let us not tear it, but cast lots for it to see whose it shall be. This was a fulfillment. This was to fulfill the scripture which says, they divided my garments among them, and for my clothing they cast lots. So the soldiers did these things. But standing by the cross of Jesus were his uh, a mother and his uh, brother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas and Mary Ma Magdalene. When they saw his brother and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his uh, a mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your m mother. And from that hour, the disciple took 
sorry, and from that hour, the disciple took her to his own home. After this, Jesus, knowing that all was now finished, said to fulfil the scripture, I thirst. A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. When Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the spirit. In essence, what the latter is saying there is he died. Right? He 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 gave up a spirit. In other words, he gave up the a ghost, and he a, a died. But of course, the hope then comes three days after, and I will go through that scripture on a Sunday. Also, as well, there's a slight difference about the crucif. There's a slight difference about the crucifixion in the book of uh, Ma Matthew right turn with me to uh, to the return with me to a um, 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 Matthew chapter 27 oh I've gone past it aren't I right okay uh, right okay so uh, um, if you turn with me to uh, to uh, uh, Matthew chapter twenty seven from verse thirty two to verse forty four, and this is what it says. Right, there's a slight variant. Right, there's a slight uh, uh, difference, and see if you can spot it out. As they went out, they found a um, a man of Serene, Simon by a name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of a skull, they offered him wine to drink, fixed with a gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them, by casting lots. Then they sat down and kept a watch over him there, and over his head they put the charge against him, which read, This is Jesus, King of the Jews. Then two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and one on the left, and those who passed and those who passed by derided him, a wag in their heads and saying, you who, you who would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So also the chief priests with the scribes and elders uh, um, uh, mocked him, saying, he saved a, a he saved others, but he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross and we will believe in him. He trusts in God. Let God deliver him and now if he desires him. For he said, I am the son of a God. And the robbers who were crucified with him also reviled him in the same way. Way. Okay, now, in verse 32, it says uh, uh, this, yeah, as they uh, went out, they found a man of serene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cr cross. So, this is obviously another uh, theme for Jesus cr Christ. And from the looks of things... It seems to be that in this that in this verse and in this particular verse only, only Jesus is referred to as serene. 
but also called Simon by name. So, was a surreal a, a name of Jesus Christ? Was it Simon? Because according to to this, it, it it according to this, it was. I will read it again from verse thirty-two. As they went out, they found a man of Serene. Sorry, Serene is the place, right? So it's Simon. Okay, right. So as they went out, they found a man of Serene, Simon by a name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And when they came to a place called Gol. Called a gather, they offered him a wine to drink and mixed with gold, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. So, according to this, but it seems to be only in this part, right? Because it's not because Jesus isn't called a Simon anywhere else in the Bible. He's you know, I mean, I thought his a, a name was Joshua or you. Joshua, but whatever, right? But also as well, the the the, the people here and here, and this is what I fully understand. The two robbers and the scribes and the elders were mocking him, right? Saying, if this is the son of a God, if he claims to be a God in the in the in, in the flesh. If he claims that him and God the Father are, are are one, then why doesn't he take himself down from the cross right now? In fact, if he is what he says he is, why did he even allow himself to be crucified in the first place? He could have prevented it. But yes, he could have done. But what they don't un understand is Jesus purposely allowed himself to be crucified to save us. To, to save me, to save you, to save every one out there who's ever been a, a born for the sins of mankind, past, present and future. This is why he had to go through this. No, in fact, actually, he, he, didn't, he, he didn't even have to go th through it. But he wanted to, even though he knew he was going to face a painful death. A death and humiliation and all that right he knew that he would complete his task in the end when you know seconds before he had died this is why he shouted out it says finished because it's, he has done he has he has completed his task in dying on the sins for mankind on the cross so yeah there we have it. I was going to read another scripture, but I don't think I have to. I think I read a tough... Oh, yeah, sorry. Right. Uh, there is a last scripture that is important. Go to Luke chapter 12, right? And that's it then. L Luke chapter 12 from verse... Uh, yeah, uh, yeah. L Luke chapter twelve, from verse four to verse five. So Luke chapter twelve, from verse four to verse five. I tell you, my friends, do not fear those who kill the body, and after that have nothing more than they can do. But I will warn you whom to fear. Fear him who after he has killed has authority to cast into hell. Yes, I tell you, fear him. Jesus Christ not only went to the cross to die. Not only did... Not only did Jesus Christ go to the cross to die for our sins. He also went to the cross to prevent us from going to hell. This is why now anyone who believes on on his precious sinless blood is now saved. But we have a choice. See, there's so many people out there who don't 
and to Sam say, well, if God loves me so much, why does he want me to go to hell? Why would he even, you know, even take me to hell? And God, not Satan, but only God has authority over hell. Satan doesn't have any authority at all. He does. He decides whether you go to heaven or to hell. But God doesn't want you to go to hell. Why do you think he sent the son to, to die on the cross in the first place? You know, Jesus is the scapegoat. He is the way out. And there is no other way to be saved except to believe on him. Jesus couldn't have made it any clearer when he said in John chapter 14 verse 6, I am the way, the truth and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through me. So, don't be afraid if another person stabs you. Yes, be wary, be concerned, and if you can, you know, if you ever get into a violent situation, right? Yes, you have the authority to to defend yourself by any means possible. But if you're a believer and you get stabbed, it's still a win-win situation for you because you'll end up in heaven anyway. It is the second death that we should be concerned about. Okay, that's all I have to say. Uh, please comment, please subscribe. Oh. This Sunday coming will be well. It, it, it's um, it's Easter Sunday, so this Sunday I will be talking about Jesus's resurrection. Please comment, please subscribe, please don't hesitate to hit that like a button. And to all of my brothers and sisters in Christ, if I do not get to see you in this lifetime, I shall see you, you all in our Father's kingdom. Amen.